What are the dangers of using illegal pesticides in your house? I'm Jill Horner. This is Comcast Newsmakers. With me is Maria Gorgo Gorovich. She is the Latino Community Outreach Coordinator for the Pennsylvania Integrated Pest Management Program at Penn State University. Thanks for being with us. Hello, Jill. Thank you for having me here today. And let's talk about how this program works. The whole goal is to use pesticides as a last resort, but why is that important? And what are some of the ways in which we can do that? What are some of the steps we can take in order to eliminate pests from our homes without using pesticides? Well, Jill, IPM stands for Integrated Pest Management, and IPM centers on pest prevention by eliminating the root causes of pest problems. No one likes to live with um, pests like roaches, mice, and rats, but it's also true that no one wants to subject his or her family to um, pest prevention tactics that may be unsafe. Uh, IPM eliminates pests using first uh, non-chemical preventive tactics. And there are a variety of different ways uh, that you do that. One is to just eliminate the conditions that could attract pests. Exactly. We eliminate the conditions such as food, um, uh, water, and shelter. And uh, that way, pests won't thrive in our homes. The other way is by excluding the pests from our homes, uh, that we can fill the holes and crevices and cracks. We can also set up monitoring traps, that way we know where the pests are coming from and uh, we can concentrate our efforts on those hot spots where, the, where we can have a pest problem. You're also reaching out to the Latino community. Uh, talk to us a little bit about the importance of this and why you're working to have this information available in Spanish as well. Well, my program analogies the fast-growing Latino population in the Philadelphia area. We are a statewide program uh, in Pennsylvania, and uh, since 2002, we have uh, an office called the Philadelphia Schools and um, IPM Community uh, partnership and uh, we are um, expanding our efforts to reach out to the Latino community by translating our program's uh, website, uh, our brochures and educational materials. We also offering uh, some educational hands-on training sessions and workshops uh, in uh, IPM and also on um, healthy homes and both are available in English and Spanish. Now, we talked about the idea of eliminating conditions, fixing some of the ways where pests can actually get into homes and setting up monitoring traps. What if that doesn't work? What about the idea of potentially using pesticides? You say there are safer ways to use them, but some people actually do turn to pesticides that are actually illegal in this country. Talk to us a little bit about that, because this is actually a concern uh, for people who may shop in, in certain stores. As you say this is uh, particularly dangerous uh, for the Latino community. This is a concern. Well, we have to understand that pesticides are poisons and that they do uh, harm people's health, especially children's health, if they are not used properly. So it's important to read the product's label. The label of the pesticide will provide us with important pieces of information like direction for use, the EPA registration number, the pest that it kills, the chemical that's inside of that container, and emergency contact numbers. And so there are some pesticides out uh, there in the market in neighborhood stores that are, are illegal because uh, they're banned by the EPA. They do not have an EPA registration number on the container. And the most common ones, uh, they're known as uh, tres pasitos. That means that the mouse walks three steps and dies. That's how toxic it is. And then we have tisachina and illegal naphthalene mothballs that look like candy and they're extremely dangerous for kids because they can just rub it and eat it. All right, very important information. Thanks for being with us. You're welcome. We've been talking with Maria Gorgorovich. I'm Jill Horner.